move into lesson 14, and this is really that time that we're going to have this moment of self-reflection. So something that we want to always model in PBL are um, what we expect our students to do. And we want the students to self-assess and reflect upon their learning and what's happening and, you know, why why they do the things they do. And um, that's what we're going to look at when we look at our pro assessing our projects and assessing our product. So um, right away, and, and this is a big question when we start PBLL is, how do I know um, that I'm on the right track? And um, it can be, it, it's not a simple question. Um, and there is going to be some amazing moments in PBLL. And then there's going to be some moments that you're going to look back and say, um, I think I could have done that a little bit better. And that's okay, right? Because that's what good teaching is. Um, so how do I know we're on the right track? We are going to use um, what BAE has, which is a project design rubric. And so this rubric, as um, and I know you know this information, has the eight essential elements on it. And we're going to be able to take our, our rubric, take our project that we're designing, and ask ourselves, does my project incorporate these best PBL practices? How do I know? So we're going to always look at what's on the right side of the rubric. This rubric is two pages, um, four rows on this side, and then and then four rows on the other because of our eight essential elements. Now, of course, what we're going to do when thinking about PBLL is look at all of the elements, but with that world language lens. You know, how do I know that they that my best practices and world languages is in my um, project? So we're going to um, talk about each one of the um, elements and then think about, connect that to um, our world language classroom. So significant content, and I'm always going to pay attention to what's to the right. You know, the project is focused on teaching students important knowledge and skills derived from standards and key concepts at the heart of academic subject areas. So right away, you're going to ask yourself, is my project focused on teaching students important knowledge and skills derived from standards and key concepts? How do I know this in the world language classroom? So we're going to talk about um, you know, language teaching, we're going to talk about content, and then we're going to talk about proficiency. So content-wise, we're going to um, use the, and I know this information, I think, was shared in Lesson 2, which is amazing information. So I'm just, you know, re reviewing this from Lesson 2 um, as well. So we're going to use the world's um, readiness standards for learning languages. We're going to use the actual standards. They're going to help us. We're going to use our state standards. You know, in New Jersey, we have our New Jersey World Language, you know, curriculum standards. Um, we're going to make sure that the content is aligned with the proficiency level. So when thinking about PBLL, it really should reflect what um, the standards think, you know, what the teacher, the standards, what is this essential content knowledge, and also what is the language that's going to be necessary for them to, to, to learn or acquire. Um, and, you know, Language language acquisition takes a long time, so it might be what performance level are they going to be at? Um, and then, you know, proficiency can take a little bit longer, which is okay. Um, so that's significant content. Let's take a look at the 21st century competencies. We're always going to um, look at the right, like I said, and um, let me read this to you. It says here, and I'm not going to read it to you. I'm going to have you start, like, I'm going to turn them into questions. You know, are there a limited number of important 21st century um, skills that are going to be assessed and taught? So I'm going to recommend that when you create this um, first project, please consider one 21st century skill to teach and assess. One, because teaching and assessing is going to take time when we think, you know, and so like a lot of times we're used to this idea that like we're going to cover certain information in you know these two weeks and when we when we throw in there um, teaching and assessing a skill that's going to make take things you know make things longer um, so in your project are there adequate opportunities to build 21st century competencies you know do you do, 
do you, are you using a rubric? Because we do have that on um, VAE.org. We have a collaboration rubric. We have a communication rubric. We have um, a creativity rubric. So you could take a look at that and um, use what is useful for you. Um, will your students work in collaborative teams? Um, you know, are the students analyzing and solving problems and thinking critically? Um, and are they given opportunities for this creativity? And so think, so when thinking about these 21st century skills, we're also going to connect it to, um, the 21st century skills map. And, um, you know, students, the students that we want in our classrooms, um, we have to develop them and we have to make sure that they understand these skills and, um, we want them to communicate, collaborate, and, and and think critically in the target language, and it's definitely possible. So let's go to in-depth inquiry. Um, and with um, inquiry, um, let's, we look to the right. It says inquiry is sustained, is sustained and academically rigorous. Students pose questions, gather, interpret data, ask further questions. So um, there's this great uh, visual, as you see, about inquiry learning, and um, it really shows us this iter iterative process that the students go through with inquiry in a project. And you have to think about, like, where does my project, like, where is inquiry sustained? How are the students um, wanting to know more about this topic and asking questions? Um, we want to be very intentional with our um, design and when we decide to share information with students, because we want them um, to know what's happening in the project, but also um, keep it interesting. And so think about when you're going to provide certain information, which is really important when you facilitate certain information. So, um, so taking a look at this, it's inquiry is really big um, in PBL. And um, when thinking about it in the world language um, world, we really need to think about this inquiry that's going to um, have meaningful um, interaction in the target language when they're gonna where they're gonna really question, um, uh, co you know, the cultural perspectives, and that's something that's going to be so big in um, PBLL. So how are you going to have that in your project? Um, looking at the driving question, uh, the driving question captures the project's main focus, it's open-ended, um, it's understanding and inspiring to students, it motivates them, it drives them to learn, and um, they gain this knowledge. When answering the driving question, um, the product should always support the students in answering the driving question. Um, and really, in the world language, and in, in thinking about world language, it's going to increase their proficiency, and it's going to have them actually engage with the target culture. I want to remind you that um, with the driving question, it should never be Googleable. So I wasn't sure if that was ever shared before, because if they could Google an answer, then we know that um, we really need um, a, um, uh, let's say, a tougher, like a, a bigger um, driving question. So the need to know, the need to know really motivates the students. Um, and um, you'll never, in it, when a PBL project is well designed, you're never going to have a student ask you, why do we need to know this? Like, why are we learning this? Because your design is so motivating and so engaging to them, and it has a purpose. They're going to right away say, I have to learn this, and I have to learn the language because it's going to help me. It's going to help me, and it's going to help others. Um, so here are some ways that we could start a project. You can, um, and this entry event is really like where you hook the students to want to learn more. Um, have you thought about your project? Have you thought about what this entry event will look like? Will you take the class on a field trip? Um, will you provide um, mock correspondence? You know, that's what how the technology. Um, that's how the technology. Um, project started with a mock letter from the school superintendent and uh, and also the Latino organization that was in um, in the town. So keep that in like think about how you're going to start the project. Um, voice and choice. Voice and choice is um, there's really like a like let's say like a spectrum of voice and choice. Like you can allow little to no voice and choice. Um, or you can allow lots of voice and choice if the student, once you feel comfortable, because a lot of it is like um, um, you, you lose a little bit of control when you allow more voice and choice. Um, so thinking about um, 
thinking about our students, they could have voice and choice of like what they can do in the project. You know, they might be motivated to say, hey, I want to go more than just communicate. I want to participate. Um, also with the products, will you allow one product? Would you allow many, you know, a different kind of product? So think about your project where voice and choice will, um, will you allow for voice and choice? With critique and revision, we're talking about, um, in your product, um, where are those opportunities that the students are going to provide feedback and critique to each other? How are you going to ensure that this peer feedback for them is um, something that's going to be constructive and make them better learners and make them just better people, that they'll be able to provide feedback for others and in a nice, kind way? Um, and that's going to be big. Um, the public audience, they... Um, in your project, where, where will they share their work with other people? Now, sharing work, um, there's really two places that it could happen. It could actually happen during the learning process, or it can be this culminating presentation. Um, and when it says other people, it could be one person that is helping you along, you know, is their actual public audience. So um, there's this great project um with Boeing out in um, Seattle, and three engineers were a part of the project um, for the students when they were creating um, these um, a test planes or something like that. So it wasn't that you needed like this whole, like it doesn't have to be this big show. It could really be someone that could help them during the learning process, during the whole project, or the culminating product. And here are just some ideas for you to think about like who your audience is, who will care about the student product. How, how how will this be um, affected? How will it, this affect the um, the community? Um, and here, once again, is the products. Like I said, we're definitely going to share that with you. And um, thinking about products, I'm sorry, this picture is like a little bit blurry. Um, I want you to realize that when you think about um, products that you're going to create with your um, in your project um, design, the more it, when you allow the same product and the same focus, taking a look at this um, box right here, the left, the top left box, that allows for more control over the project. But when you think about different products and different focus, you're thinking about different rubrics for every product and then how each rubric is going to assess the focus of the product. So it's, so really it's, it's when you're, if you're just starting with PBLL, you know, try to stick to the same product and the same focus, which is okay. Um, and as you get better with PBLL, then you can move to, um, to these different products, same focus. So keep, keep that in mind. Um, BIE also has a rubric for rubrics, um, which I thought was pretty interesting. And um, you can take a look at it to see because you really have to think about your products have to be assessed with a rubric. And um, the rubric, um, either you're going to use a rubric that you've done in the past or you're going to create something new. I really recommend you looking at products from past years, if you have that, if you started this PBLL journey, and taking a look at your best product and what you liked about it and what, you know, the students learned from it and how you're going to use that for um, assessment and what your worst product looked like and then how can we make it better. You know, use that those examples to help you write your um, rubrics. And... Um, it's, it's, I feel like you could have a course on making rubrics for a whole semester as well. So that's, I mean, that's, it's just, it's a lot to learn the rubric, but we definitely recommend rubrics for your products. And that's how you're going to, so we started with the big assessment, like assessment of your project, and now we're assessing products. Um, and just with assessment in general, it's, you know, how do I know I'm on the right track? You know, how do I know that I'm, you know, starting from the beginning? I, I'm, I have this project. I'm, I'm self-assessing. Um, I have all these products, and they're focused on language. Um, but we want to make sure that at the end, like this whole PBLL process is really about making this amazing student that's going to communicate and you um, see different perspectives and, and really think about like we're building this student and so we know we're on the right track because our projects are engaging and um, 
they're going to learn so much. So keep that in mind when thinking about um, your assessing your project and then assessing your products. And I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so far, we have one question. So let me give that to you. Hold on. Um, the question is, uh, this was about uh, teaching only one 21st century skill. Mm -hmm. Since I agree with teaching only one 21st century skill, in your experience, is there one that is most commonly needed among beginning or early L2 learners? Um, I would definitely say um, communication. Um, in, um, in, 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 let's say, a traditional school system, um, teachers really haven't, I mean, students um, really don't have the opportunity to work and communicate with each other. It's always that teacher to learner um, input. So um, when thinking about, you know, teaching and assessing, I love to see them communicate with each other, which is just a life skill that we um, need to start in, you know, elementary school. Um, because we know as adults that's something that people have a tough time with communicating. So, um, I can't, it, you know what, it, your, your, your project will, will tell you which 21st century skill to focus on. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's going to be interesting. And I know that you're like using the information that's on the rubric that you'll be able to tell, like which, it, which, which is most important for, my project and my um, my product. Okay, uh, we just have another question. Um, does BIE have sample project evaluation rubrics? Um, so when I'm not sure if you mean like your your project design, like your you, what the teacher creates, or are you talking about the products that the students create? I'm not. I need clarification there. Okay. So because because products can be so different, um, I, I know that there's examples um, there from other um, projects. You know, I just I I know that the product is not going to include the language part, which I you know I, I know that all of you would help in creating these better um, rubrics with um, the language assessment there as well for your product. So um, I can't say there's much information out there, but it's it's there are rubrics to products not for not with the language lens. Okay, we have a, another question. Uh, when students participate in creating rubrics, at what point should this be done? Near the beginning of a project, near the end, or as part of an ongoing iterative process? Ooh. Um, I believe in that learning process. Like I believe that when the students ask you, when they tell you, like you, you have a really good idea of, hey, I think we should change this rubric because, you know, this just happened, you know, we just learned this and, and it's not captured in our rubric. So I, I believe it could definitely be changed. Um, so it really, it, it really depends on your learners and how um, engaged they are in that rubric. But I, I believe that rubrics should be co-created with students. And I believe once students get comfortable with PBLL, that they'll help co-create and design projects as well, because they're going to care about um, these really big um, challenges, to, you know, in the world. Okay, and we've answered all the questions. We still have time. Oh, sorry. Uh, Stephen has a question, so I'll turn things over to him. My question is, uh, Liliana, what projects are you working on with your students right now, and what level are they at? Can you describe a little bit more to us oh. about what's going on in your class? Steven, I wish I could say that I'm working with students right now. I just left the classroom and um, I am a supervisor of a world language department in Fairlawn, New Jersey. So um, I'm pretty new and this whole idea of PBLL um, is something that um, I really want to um, bring to my um, colleagues, but in a way that um, they're going to want to learn about it. So at this moment, um, 
I am not in the classroom anymore and really happy because now I'm overseeing um I'm overseeing a whole department of chi- Chinese, Spanish, and French. Um, so I'm hoping to, um, in the future, uh, start working with my teachers on creating these PBLL projects. And um, it's 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 not easy, you know. And anyone who says like PBLL is easy, it's not. It's but it's an amazing um, learning. It's amazing learning for our students. And so I am. Um, I try to bring these PBLL. Um, ideas to my teachers um, by modeling it in our department meetings and in our PD. Okay. Um, Just a reminder again, uh, if you haven't participated in the poll, please do so. Um, I don't see any other questions, but we again have time, so maybe we'll wait for... No? Okay. Um, I've been getting the signal. It's time to move on. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you okay. so much. I thank you so much, everyone. And um, I do want to let everyone know that it's not easy, but it's way more engaging than telling students to open uh, open up their book to page, you know, 15 to conjugate verbs. So keep that in mind. You're doing an amazing job. Okay. <laughs>